Every summer, without fail, I seemingly always make my way into the Algonquin backcountry on one of my many summer adventures. But this summer had been different, spending much of my time in the remote Yukon Territory and exploring hundreds of kilometers in northwestern Ontario, I hadn't visited one of Ontario's most famous parks. That would change at the end of August as I planned a short route to explore the dark, tea-stained waters of the Nipissing River. For quite some time now, I'd looked at maps and wondered about this winding section of river. Wondered if it was worth paddling. People had told me it was an ugly, overgrown alder maze, which is exactly why I needed to go see for myself. Sometimes, these seldom traveled places are the most interesting, beautiful, and enjoyable places you'll go. The trip would begin on one of my favorite axes into Algonquin Park along the Tim River. Day one, although not an overly difficult one, would involve four portages before reaching my goal for the day in the headwaters of the Nipsing River, Big Bob Lake. I am extremely excited to be here almost a perfect time of year. It's not almost perfect time of year, it is the perfect time of year. say I almost forgot how many portages there were in Algonquin and how steep some of them can be. It's going to take some getting used to. Slowly but surely, Betty Lou and I would make our way through the park. You couldn't have asked for a nicer day. With a gentle breeze, very few bugs, and the leaves just starting to change, even the portages were enjoyable. It seemed crazy to me just how big the trees were as I walked through the forest. The small jack pines and black spruce that dominate the landscape further north were all replaced by towering pines and huge birch. I'd forgotten how beautiful this place was.
it is getting to that time of day where it's time to find a campsite. If I remember correctly, at the far end, the far uh, west end of Big Bob Lake, there's quite a nice site there. So it's open. That's where I'll stay tonight. Oh, gorgeous day. just made it to camp and it's pretty much exactly as I remember. It's quite open and it definitely is a well used campsite but it's uh, it's quite gorgeous. Get the sunset, nice breeze coming through here right now and I am very grateful to, uh, to be at camp in Algonquin day one. Perfect. Absolutely perfect morning here in Algonquin. Wow. Couldn't ask for nicer weather than today. I love these late summer, early fall mornings where you get the mist on the water. You can still feel the warmth in the sun though. Perfect day. on the Nipissing River now. It's really stunning. It's one of my favorite things to do is to paddle these small rivers or creeks. So cool. Seeing all the cobwebs with the mist on them in the morning. Very cool. A little worried this might take me quite a while with the water levels, but one way or another, 
me and Lou will make our way through this section. From the way people described this section of river to me, I was kind of expecting to be stuck in alders all day. So when I discovered the first part of the day was paddling through flooded meadows with nice portages and easy paddling, I was pleasantly surprised. I actually thought I was going to be in for a very easy day. Well, as it turns out, I wasn't, but I didn't know it at the time. This really is one of the nicest parts of Algonquin that I've paddled in. So far, this little stretch on the Nipsing River has been just gorgeous. As Betty Lou and I made our way down the next portage, I could see a change in the landscape. At the bottom of a steep, Mucky Portage, I would find exactly what I was expecting. A narrow, alder-lined river with dark tea-stained water. This must have been the section of river that people had been talking about. Up until this point, our progress had been great, but I had a feeling that things were going to slow down. I mean, really slow down. the start of that last portage. I thought maybe it was just missing a sign, but no, I missed where it started, so I had to kind of bushwhack. Thank you. 
The river would grow shallower and narrower as we made our way down what seemed like a northern jungle. At times, I wasn't really sure where the river went or if it was wide enough to even pass through. Twisting, turning, wading, and pushing, we would continue on, dragging the canoe over what seemed like an inconceivable number of beaver dams along the way. tight almost the whole way since these alders started. There's no let up, tons of rock gardens. The water here is so dark. Tea stained water. I feel like I was making great progress all morning and the last few hours I feel like I've probably only covered a couple kilometers but Eventually, we would find the final marred portage of the day, leading to Grass Lake, which was the site we were supposed to be staying at. I was certainly excited, and I might even say mildly relieved to see the portage. I was also pretty hopeful that paddling through and camping at a place called Grass Lake, our chances of seeing a moose would be fairly high. I was actually a little surprised we hadn't seen one yet, to be honest. With heavy rain in the forecast, I was happy to be at camp. With the tarp set up and a full belly of food, it was extremely peaceful sitting alone in the bush. Just before dark, as the rain started to fall, Betty Lou would let me know that there was a visitor close to camp. At first I thought it might be a bear behind the campsite, but eventually a cow moose would wander out of the forest.
ask for a better way down the day than that. So cool. It is a very cold and wet morning here in Algonquin. It poured rain all night. It was just kind of stopped, but it's actually almost misting out right now. Should make for an interesting day of travel. Very windy out there as well. Kind of enjoying just being underneath the tarp right now being warm <laughs> and my feet not being wet. Definitely one of those mornings that uh, wouldn't hurt my feelings if I was still laying in my uh, warm, dry sleeping bag. We gotta keep moving. Got a couple kilometers of creek travel before I get to my next portage. I've got three portages today to do in total and uh, this will be my longest one of the day and the longest one of the trip at uh, somewhere around 1.4 kilometers. It's quite steep and uh, I think I've done this one before and it's quite slippery too when it rains so it should make for an interesting portage. Today would be one of those days that you just had to keep moving. Cold, wet, and tired from the previous day's paddle, I knew that once I got through this portage, the rest of the day, and trip for that matter, should be smooth sailing.
made it on to Floating Heart Lake, which means I only have one more portage for the rest of the day. It also meant I was nearly at camp, and to make things even better, the sun had come out just in time to dry everything off. It would make for an incredibly enjoyable evening as we relaxed in the sunshine and watched the sun set across the lake. With September just a day away, it felt especially bittersweet that the trip was nearly complete. These summers keep feeling shorter and shorter for me. Even though I'd spent nearly the entire summer paddling and exploring across Canada, knowing there was really only a few more weeks of paddling was really starting to sink in. I was debating doing this short trip to Algonquin as I had one more big trip to complete and some prep work still to do. But I was so glad I'd come. This park never ceases to amaze me with the things you get to see and the remoteness you can feel. Paddling down winding stretches of river, listening to the loons call, and having moose wander up to your campsite isn't something that happens everywhere. I was lucky to have visited Algonquin once again to have these experiences that few people other than canoeists get to experience. <laughs>